Welcome everybody. This is Mark Stepp, Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve, and I've got another fireside chat uh, started here for us. We're going to wait just a couple seconds to uh, let a few people come online while that begins. I want to hit some ground rules and stuff and kind of description of what we are doing. So this is the fireside chat. Fireside chat is really dependent upon your interaction. It's it's really just question and answer type thing so that you got a question for me, I'll certainly give you my best answer that I know. And if I don't know it, I would certainly find out for you. Um, we have on the other line with me is Michael Fernahu, who is part of our customer success team. He will be watching the questions and stuff and making sure that um, I stay in line. So uh, if, if you get any answers online, it's actually coming from Michael in most cases. Um, we are recording this, so if you aren't able to stay on the whole time, but uh, want to be able to see the, the information, we will be having it. It is recorded. We will post it out on our YouTube channel and make it available via email. If you've registered, you should get a follow-up email with, with all that information as well. So. Uh, on the right-hand side, or actually, you know, tell them where it's at. Um, on the GoToWebinar control panel, there is a section there for questions. So what I really want you to do is um, type in your questions there. We had a few questions that were asked prior to the meeting as, uh, as you guys registered. So we're going to go through a couple of those. But definitely, 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 please um, ask questions. Uh, this if if you if we don't get questions i'm going to end it early so that's just a warning to you <laughs> um and i want to make sure i answer all your questions so uh let me hit just a couple of these first ones as we do wait on them to come in and proceed from there so uh one of the questions that we got from uh brandy uh was adding actions to a workflow how do you add actions to a workflow. So give you a little bit of information. At the, the top of the screen within RealVob, we've got four menu items, dashboard, calendar, workflow, and template. Workflows and templates kind of work hand in hand with each other. The workflow is, what am I doing? Um, when do I do it? Um, and the template is, what am I sending? Uh, that'll either be a, an email, a text message, a tweet, that type of stuff. But for a workflow, you basically decide what is it that I'm going to do when and what am I sending type stuff. So I'm going to go to one here, say um, new lead. Let me just grab one here. So say, for instance, um, the, the question was this, how do I add an action? So a workflow has a description, it has activities, multiple, many different types of activities, and those activities can be done at any period from the start to the end, lots of different milestone dates. But if you edit any particular activity, you're going to get some details about that activity. The title, who's supposed to do it, um, who am I sending this to? Typically, it's like the workflow contact or a party member of some sort. You got to know who am I going to send this to if, it's, if it is some kind of um, email that has to go out or text message, and then when am I doing it? Well, if you just have those pieces, the, this can be made into like a reminder system just to remind you, hey, you need to do this. What we include within Realvolve is the ability to do actions. And an action is an automated process of some sort. And there's a few different things that you can do with an action. Um, in addition to that, you can actually have multiple actions that you execute at the time that you go to complete this activity. So you might wanna make sure that there's different choices uh, available whenever you go to complete this activity. I'm going to go ahead and create an action on this. So this particular uh, activity is to send an email uh, from Joe Agent and whoever the workflow, whoever I started this workflow on is the workflow contact. What I want to do is I want to say, well, whenever this comes in, it's a it's a new lead. Maybe I want to send some kind of new lead information to them. So I'm going to create an action. 
And because I can have multiple actions, I want to give this action some kind of title. This is just your own personal uh, description of what this action is. But I'm just going to say send first email. You can type in whatever you want in there. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And actually, the title itself doesn't even have to deal necessarily with what the action pieces do. There's three different types of things that you can do with an action right now. You can send a message. You can add or remove tags. And or you can start and stop workflows. And I say and and or because you can do any or all three of these within an action. So you could say, I want to send a message. I want to add a tag or remove a tag, and I also want to start a different workflow. So all of these three things can be done simultaneously if you want. In this case, I just want to do maybe one thing and that's send a message. So I'm going to send a message. Um, how do I want to send that message? I can send it manually with or without a preview. Just means nothing is automated other than the message itself can get can get filled in for me automatically, but it only happens uh, when I choose to do it manually, and then I can choose whether I want preview or not. Um, I can send something automatically. That means like at eight o'clock every morning, I might send out my automated email messages or text messages, and I want to send it out automatically at whatever prescribed time. Or if in your in your scheduled time over here, maybe you've specified a certain time, maybe at two o'clock, you want it to you know send a message it will if there is a time associated on a particular day it'll go out on that time otherwise if there's no time associated it just goes out at your default time which is in the settings area under the email settings um, there's also one item here called immediately now this is more for uh, auto responders where I want to send something out just as soon as it comes in I just want it to immediately go out this would be an auto response of an email. And that's in fact, really what I wanna do with this particular one. Um, this is a new lead. I'm gonna uh, make a call at some point, but I wanna send this email and I just want it to be blasted out. I just want it to go out. So I'm gonna say send immediately. The next question is, is I know what I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send it immediately, but what am I sending? And you get to choose, do I wanna send an email, Facebook, SMS, or tweet? In this case, I wanna send an email. And then do, which template, that goes back to the, the item that we had over here, they kind of go in hand in hand, we've got workflows and templates, which template do we want to use? And then you can pick from whatever template that you want to do. So maybe I can do some kind of uh, thank you, new lead thank you. So I'll pick that. If I want to see that selected item, I can click on the little preview item here, click on that, it'll open up a separate tab within Realvolve with that particular template opened up and you can see what it is. So you can see here, I just, I created something with a blah, blah, blah and, and very basic information. So maybe we wanna correct this. Uh, hello, greeting, and the greeting is a merge field. The, the greeting is, who am I sending this to? Um, hello, John, uh, just want to, uh, let's not yell at him. <laughs> just wanted to say thanks for, uh, visiting my website. I see you are interested in, and then I'm going to take this off because that's actually the contacts address. Um, uh, bracket, bracket, whoa. Uh, interested in um, some information. Now, for some reason here, I need to figure out what I'm doing here. It is not bringing up my merge fields. And I bet you there's something else. Let me do this. Wow. Something, there it is, okay. So, hello, uh, I think there was something messed up about, this is my uh, trainer site, so I have all kinds of crazy stuff in here. I think there was something wrong with the template. Um, hello, greeting, just pick that. Um, thanks for visiting my website. Um, I see you are, man, 
interested in bracket bracket uh, interested in property so um, one of our merge fields is a is a field called interested in property address where if you've got some kind of website that they fill in hey i'm interested in 123 south main street you can put that in there and then um, you can use all kinds of merge fields to to do different types of things so i'm also going to put in my signature and we'll save so at least now my my template looks right but what's going to happen then is whenever i execute this action i'm going to go ahead and click on save it will send that email now if i wanted to create another action i certainly could create another action in, in this case it would really make sense because i'm wanting it to go out immediately and just automatically blast out but if i did one that was a manual action of some sort maybe i wanted to uh check to see hey are they interested in condos or are they interested in uh single family residential and then have a different email based off of what they're interested in there there could be some some uh, ability there to say hey pick this one or that one so you can create multiple actions but that's how you go through and you create an action make sure you click on the update button and then next time this needs to go out it'll go out with the right information so hope that was uh interesting for you let's see michael looks like we've got some people is there yeah any... um <clears throat> one thing i wanted to highlight there is you got stuck and uh you know users sometimes get stuck on something so you kind of refreshed the uh the template um a couple of things i just wanted to highlight there for us one is remembering that realvolve is basically three databases in one right so it's the contacts properties and transactions so what you did is reset the template so it was looking to the correct database right yeah so whenever i do crazy stuff like this mm i just doing something at some point I was doing something and I just happened to pick this one which was probably not the the greatest explanation but what I wanted to check was if for whatever reason if I if I put up the two brackets it should bring up a list of merge fields if it doesn't there's something that's preventing it and it could be either the 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 source of this has a lot of you know crazy stuff I'm not really going to get into it but uh, it checks um, the availability of merge fields based off some of that source, but it also checks this. And I think that this was somehow uh, not selected properly or something, and it just wasn't um, bringing up that list. It may have had it defaulted or something, but it wasn't actually selected. So by changing this, then it made my merge fields available. But you should always have, if, if you've got a merge field need of some sort you've got to know which database is it going to come from is it from my contact database for my leads or whatever is it from my property database maybe my new listings and stuff or is it for the transactions or the closings so i've got all my buyers and contract dates and stuff like that so the the template has to know where am i going to get my data and so that's why that question's on there but if i come in here and i hit bracket bracket it's going to bring up my list depending on what that choice is the the other fact is is whatever workflow you're cho you're using so this workflow is a contact workflow so i have to use contact uh a, a contact template um making sure that's used with contact so that's just uh something we we get asked yeah, a lot super helpful uh troubleshooting tip and so if you if you're not getting your merge field list to pull up it could be that you haven't selected that use with yet um or in this case you know a simple refresh of the page a lot of times will fix that but um even even the professionals run into some trouble here or there so yeah. good to see you work through that yeah if I, if I don't select this right here my brackets don't do anything that's really kind of where i should have went first anyway yeah um okay so follow-up question on workflows uh, david here is asking just kind of where do you get started and a specific question from him is should he should he buy some workflows and templates should he create them from scratch um, i think the answer is probably depends on what what you need and who you are um, i will highlight this and mark maybe you can navigate us here but if you go to our home page to realvolve.com and then scroll down a little bit, you'll see our workflow store. Uh, you click on workflows. So once this comes up, we'll just scroll down slightly until the menu pops up. 
and then workflows right there. It'll take you to the, the workflow store, and that'll show you some of the highlighted workflows that we have. And of course, all of these workflows would be represented within the library as well. Um, but uh, you know, more to David's question of best practices, Mark, what would you say to that? Absolutely. So it depends on who you ask. Uh, it is my uh, my professional opinion that if you have your own set um, list of things that you do, you know that you've got a certain procedure that you go through for every new lead, you've got a certain procedure you go through for every new listing and every closing that that you can create your own workflows from scratch. Now, if you're a brand new realtor uh, or you just you've you've been haphazardly doing something for the last 20 years and selling uh, real estate and just happen to you know be successful at this without any technology, these are some really great solutions coming in here and and uh, assuming or using some of the the solutions that other agents have created for Realvolve is is an awesome way of doing it. So um, I do I do want to uh, note here and I'll put this in the uh, chat area uh, for everybody. Just a link there for our YouTube channel um, on our fireside chat on eight one of this year. I went through pretty, almost spent the entire thing just going over workflows, how to uh, create them from scratch, uh, using some of our template stuff that we've got that's uh, a, a worksheet that helps you kind of mindstorm it, brainstorm the, the entire uh, workflow process, and it takes you through that step by step. So definitely take a look at this if you really want to you know, create it on your own. It's not that hard if you just kind of step through it. Um, the The biggest challenge that most agents have is the mind storm. Uh, what is it that I want to put in here? If you don't have your own list, your own checklist of things that you do, uh, you have to invent that and or use somebody else's. And by by using your own checklist to create that, it really makes it very simple. It's just a matter of of identifying what is it that I want to do, when do I want to do it, who am I doing it for, and and putting all those together within one centralized list. Now, workflow is more than just a checklist. It's because it has the actions available, because it has um, the the actions on the right here. We also have checklist items. There's lots of things that you can do with workflows that you can't do with, with standard checklists. Making sure that the right person on your team is supposed to be doing certain things, making sure the right person within, maybe it's a, a, a listing or a transaction and you gotta get certain party members to do certain things. The, the uh, lender or the title, uh, the, the attorney, whoever, wherever you are in, in the United States and how you do your processes, different people are involved within those processes and setting up a procedure, uh, your, your blueprint for how this normally goes is really important. And what, what I tend to tell people is don't worry about getting it perfect. If you just want to start with five steps or, or six steps, you know, whatever it is, make sure that those six steps work for you. And then at the end of that listing, think about hmm, what things went wrong. How could I have done better? What, what communication could I have sent to the buyer or the seller that would have made this process easier for them? It's like, well, I could have added another message, you know, two days before closing, letting them know what they needed to bring for closing. Okay, so let's add one more step to this. Let's just come down here, click on, you know, this add, add a workflow activity and add one more step, add one more template and, and go with it. Now I've got seven items on my list and then A, you know, the, the more you think about it, the, the better it gets. You don't have to get it perfect when you're first starting, so. That awesome, and uh, I'll add a little bit there too. Um, so, building your own workflow, if that's the the best option for you, I would definitely pursue that. If you are looking for content that's already pre-written, um, 
maybe think of this as kind of good, better, best, but in the workflow library, one of the workflows that you'll find is actually a free suite uh, kind of towards the bottom under Realvolve. And you can see Mark's navigating us there, but it's called Realvolve Exclusive Client Services Suite. And this is a full suite of workflows that Mark has built for us that's completely free to you. And it's got everything from lead follow up, uh, transaction management on through. So that's a really good one. Um, under the R's, Mark, uh, towards the bottom. Realvolve Exclusive. It's in there somewhere. There it is. Uh, just a few up. Yep. So it's a free one for you. Um, now, of course, there's a, a lot you can purchase in here. What I would encourage you there is if you're looking for something to purchase, just email sales at realvolve.com and they can really talk to you about what your needs are, what you're looking for, and recommend some good solutions for that. So that's a, a good option for you. Now, kind of on the far side of the spectrum there, we have that navigator program where if you're looking for someone that can really coach and consult with you and help build those workflows out for you, then we have a program for that as well. Yeah. Uh, Michael, your voice is breaking up a lot. I'm not sure if your internet connection is going wonky or what, but or if it's mine, but it's uh, definitely a challenge. One thing I did want to say on this is uh, to install this, all you really need to do is come down and click on install package. If if this is a public item, you can install it. it. doesn't cost you a thing. You can install it. If it is a premium item, say, you know, whatever it is, and and you go to install this, it's going to ask for a code. You just got to put in the code that belongs to it. So, you know, if there's anybody in here, a lot of these are agents. Other agents have created wonderful workflow packages, and they sell them or give them away. Um, based off of needing a code. You can communicate, uh, contact them. Here's one from Kendall Young, gives you an email. And you know it may be something where if you know Kendall, she can just give it to you. Otherwise, you, know, you can purchase it from her, uh, go to install the package, and then sh you know, she'll give you a code type thing. Um, but that's, that's a way of getting installed if you don't wanna go through the, the process of creating your own, absolutely. Next question. Uh, not sure if that helped my audio or not, but um, several Watch questions that. on tags. What are they for? How do you use them? How do you implement them? That is an awesome question. Uh, excellent question. A tag is nothing more than a classification. And the cool thing about Realvolve is that you can put a tag on just about anything. Uh, contacts, properties, transactions, uh, the documents all have tags. Even the activities can have tags. So whenever you're putting in, in a workflow, I'm going to go back to here, there's a section here for a workflow that you can add a tag. This tag is just a way that I can group things. So even though this has, you know, test checklist, um, maybe I want to put in there a, uh, um, a tag called personal. Okay, and I want to update that. So then I can come over here and just say, well, show me all my personal items. And there's one here, it has uh, personal in the, the title, but this one was the one that I had personal in the tag. So it looks for both the title and the tags whenever it's looking for things. So you can tag virtually anything. It's to help you group records together. So if I'm in my contacts area, Maybe I want to look at everybody that's um, uh, that. I, maybe maybe I want a lot of people to be on a newsletter list. Well, I can go through my list individually. I can, um, or I can come in here and just select certain contacts in my database. I can come over here and say add a tag, and then I can say uh, personal. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna add one more personal info for whatever reason so I can add tags there now that does depend on whether you have the ability to add tags uh, if you are an admin you can add tags if the admin has given you rights to uh, add tags you can add tags otherwise you have to select the ones that are there I'm actually adding that tag to this list um, so now those four or five people um, are now in my 
personal info list. If I wanted to, I can come over here and say filter. I want to create a new filter. And in that filter, I want to find anybody that's on my uh, personal info. So I can check that. You'll see up here, it gives you a, a total. I can click on that. And now it has, uh, it'll show me those people that were marked for personal info. So now I can come in here, maybe, uh, again, maybe this was newsletter or whatever, but I can come in here, select multiples. Maybe I want to email everybody. I can, you know, send a, a mass email out to these people um, to, to do whatever I, you know, need to send out. I do caution you if you're sending out a, an email, make sure it's not spam. Uh, we, you know, make sure it's, it's relevant and personal to that person. Um, and something that they're going to want. If they get something and they mark it as spam, you could be uh, blacklisted and that's not good for you. So but that's what, what tags are for, is just tagging things different ways. You can do the same type of thing for uh, your properties or your transactions. Maybe um, you want to uh, come in here and maybe this was originally a, uh, a FISBO, you know, I can select FISBO and maybe another FISBO. And then I want to go in there and say, well, show me all the uh, FISBO items. And I probably had some other ones as well. Um, actually, I think I may have, there we go, there's two. So here's, you know, here's the two properties that were FISBO properties. Um, so you can do any number of things like that. Activities, activities may be tagged with something. Maybe you want to tag certain activities within your workflow as being uh, closing activities or whatever. So you could go in there and tag, uh, tag them with closing or you know whatever, and pull up just a full list of everything that's marked for closing. So you can use tags for anything. Um, and you can use multiple tags and use them in correlation with each other. So uh, maybe somebody has to have two, specifically have two tags. Maybe they're on my newsletter list and they're uh, sellers. You know, I want to send a specific email out to my sellers for my newsletter. You could certainly do that. Does that answer? It seems it really comes down <clears throat> to process and uh, and maybe business dynamics. You know, especially if you're a part of a a, a team with a lot of moving parts that I might use tags more than someone else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. At a minimum, I would strongly encourage everyone to use tags to, to get their contacts categorized in a way that you can really be strategic and focused. Um, Mark, we got a couple of questions here about merge fields and they're asking, uh, two different people ask the same question actually. How do you either create a merge field or how do you find the merge fields that are already in the system? Sure. So <clears throat> um, the the best or the easiest thing to do, uh, let me just create a new template here and say uh, test. I'm going to go to uh, transaction. I'm going to set up a transaction email um, closing day. Okay, so you're going to create some kind of template with with information about closing day or whatever. <clears throat> Whenever you use the two square brackets, the, I'm just going to type in two square brackets. It's going to come up with the entire list of all the different merge fields that are available. And while it's good, uh, the challenge is, is there's an entire list and it's it's huge. The best thing that you can do is after you type the two square brackets, type in some kind of keyword. Um, maybe, you know, I want to do closing time um, or something like that. So as I type, it finds any of the merge fields that contain the, <clears throat> the text that I'm typing right after those two square brackets. So maybe I wanted the closing time in there um, on this. and uh, then I can, you know, just press enter and then it fills out the entirety of the merge field for me. So I don't have to worry about typing each individual element in there. So if you know the general thing, whatever it is that you want to include, um, 
maybe I want to do my um, my seller's uh, or a seller warranty. You know, anytime it has the word seller in it, uh, seller settlement date. I mean, these are all different things that have the word seller in there. I can still narrow it down more as I type more and maybe maybe you you know want whatever so you can you can do it that way the other thing that you can do and um if i go to my help let me just go to help down here down here at the bottom there's a help section um this brings up our our help environment or help center and there's a section here called getting started in the getting started we've got a lot a lot of different documents of things that would be nice to know um, of which one thing here is the merge fields now um, we we do need to update it a little bit but for the most part th there's been some new date fields added recently that we need to include in there uh, but you can click on that download this as a document um, merge fields let me pull it up um, and it it contains you know like all the different merge fields in all the different sections so that you can you know see what they are but you know if i'm wanting bedrooms if i would have just typed in bracket bracket bed it would have found them um you know just the different field you know or will probably know which field that you want for whatever document that you're creating uh if it's a you know property field of some sort say for instance uh garage type or bedrooms bathrooms it's pretty much labeled right there. If I know I want to use this field, just type in bracket, bracket, bed, and it'll bring it up. So that's the way I always do it. I, I don't know the entire list and looking up to me seems um, more challenging than just typing in the keyword. Uh, one place I like to look as well would be in the default fields in, um, in your settings. Uh, now that's not merge fields, but at least gives you kind of a reference point on the different dates and party members that we have. So you might know what you're looking for. Sure. So under the settings and then set default fields, these are the different fields. Like if you're creating a brand new property or transaction, there's a transaction section as well. Um, these are the fields that you want to display on the the property or transaction by default. So you want to always create one with a seller and a seller to the selling agent. There may be other fields that you want by default or someone that you don't want. Maybe they're included and you don't want them. Just uncheck them from the list. Uh, same type of thing for dates. I've got a lot of different dates that are pre-selected. So whenever I create a brand new listing, these are all the ones that get added. If you only want two or three of them in there, you can certainly add them. The really cool part of this is, if this field is used within a workflow and it gets filled in from a workflow checklist or whatever, it will add that field for you on that property anyway. So you're not missing out by having it unchecked necessarily. It's just that um, it's, it's you know, if it's something that you use all the time, go ahead and check it and use it that way. All right, a couple of questions about some specific integrations. So um, let's see, we've got MyTheo and Real Scout and MailChimp. MyTheo. So the I question is, do we integrate and how do we integrate? So uh, most of our integration, most of the time integration involves getting leads of some sort from some source maybe realtor.com. If these are, I'm, I'm not sure what my Theo is, um, but uh, MailChimp, you might have something where you want to, you know, have, you've got a website, you want to send information to MailChimp, you're also wanting to send it to, to Realvolve, you can do it either way you know, within this. But uh, our integration is done through Zapier. Uh, Zapier.com, if you just go to Zapier.com, you can set up a free account. Uh, the nice thing about the free account is that you can, for the most part, um, have access to over a thousand different application integrations without any cost. Now, if you're doing certain ones that have the premium, unfortunately, Zapier does require you to have a paid version of Zapier in those cases. Uh, but if you've got a MailChimp, MailChimp's a free one where you can, if you put a name into 
uh, Realvolve and you want it to automatically go into MailChimp, or if you're putting in information in the MailChimp and you want it to automatically go into Realvolve, uh, you can set up a Zap. And we've got training and stuff on Zaps within that help section as well, and um, uh, lots of videos and, and different stuff. One thing that I do want to make sure that you guys are aware of is um, under training.realvolve.com training.realvolve.com there are what uh, 11 or so uh, different types of trainings that are available that are free uh, you do need to register it's a it is a separate registration for this than a login anybody whether they have a a Realvolve account or not can use this so if you've got some kind of uh, somebody that might be starting with you, you've not set them up yet in Realvolve, but you want them to get some trainings, definitely send them here and they can learn it. Uh, there's a section for key concepts and uh, the contact database that you can learn, but we've also got this one called Zapier and it takes you through some of the the step-by-step -step processes of setting up a Zap and you know bringing the the information in from just setting up the account, uh, setting up email parsers or real gigs, Zillow, realtor.com. These are all different things that, that can be set up. Lots and lots of integration is possible and just kind of depends on what you need. Zapier is a tremendous resource. It's amazing what you can do with, with Zapier. So definitely take a look at it and, um, and utilize it for any kind of integration that you may need. If for some reason they don't have a specific, you know, like, like um, my Theo and I, like I said, I'm not even familiar with it. Is there, I don't. T-H-E-O. Yeah, I, I'm just looking to see if there was anything uh, uh -huh. related at all. It doesn't have any kind of zap created, but if you receive an email, whenever a lead comes in, if that's what it's for, and I, again, I don't know what it's for, but if you receive an email from any source, typically that source, that, that email can be uh, forwarded to the Zapier parser, email parser, in which case you can then say, okay, anytime you see the words first name, grab everything afterwards and it's my first name, stick it into the Realvolve first name field. You can create a parser, an email parser, that yanks the information out properly in its, in its correct format and stick it into Realvolve as needed. It can then start a workflow, it can send text messages, it can tag, it can do all the things that you need to do from within the, the integration of Zapier and Realvolve. We've got, we've got our own um, Zap piece that lets you do, uh, do the process of uh, integrating with lots of different things. And these are some of the integrations that people have already set up um, and made available in, in doing things with, with Realvolve, so. And Garrett did clarify that that is a, a lead source. So looks okay, like perfect. Zapier lead parser or email parser would be the way to go. Absolutely, yes. Cool, I got a question here from Vincent about the Google Sync. And so he's got his calendar synced. He has activities coming over from his Google Calendar that are personal events, like family events. So what would be a best practice for trying to separate out the personal versus business into the Robolf calendar? Yeah, so um, one of the, I guess, challenges that that we do have right now is the fact that we synchronize to the main calendar whatever that main calendar is. Uh, typically, it's the first one that you use. What I would probably encourage you to do is create within Realvolve, or within Google, create a, a second, a separate calendar for personal items and put those personal items on that particular calendar and then everything else would sync um, the way you need to. So just as a uh as a piece here so over here on uh, actually let me go to my personal one i'm not sure i've got that much more in here so um so uh, i i used to do and i um have uh had a lot of experience with boy scout so i had a personal boy scout calendar that that we had and everything that is in the main calendar main calendar is always at the top 
So I have my main calendar, which is Mark Steph, which it synchronizes everything with that. And then anything that's related with other things, I create other calendars for. It'll still show up on my calendar. Whenever I put items on there, I can share those calendars with other people. So, you know, my wife, Kathy, if, if I need her to have access to my calendars, I can share these just as, as well as the others. So this just allows me to synchronize to the main calendar with RealVolve, which is the one on the top. So there was a question from beforehand, and anybody that's been following us closely on Facebook knows that you've been working really hard on the mobile. So maybe uh, can, you can give us a quick update on where things sit with that right now. Sure. So uh, we're in testing right now with with the new version. Um, there's still a few things that I'm in process of of ironing out, um, but we the the basis of everything that we're doing is you come in main menu. There's a whole section for the dashboard, which allows you access to you know a lot of the uh, the different client information, storage of uh, of leads and, and how they break out, all that's in there. Uh, we've got a section here for the contacts. Um, so if I spell it right, um, you know, I can go in, find people, do all that. Um, if I want to switch between uh, phone numbers and stuff, I can do that. I can edit all this information, uh, make my changes. Uh, maps uh, are all available. I've got a section for calendars, for properties, for transactions. Uh, the list piece I'm still ironing out, but that's uh, making uh, making good progress. A um, lot of just different types of things that are available for properties, transactions, being able to start workflows, all of this. And the really cool part of this is both Android and iPhone are identical. So it's right now we've got our current iPhone app is a little more advanced than the uh, uh, the Android app, and that becomes you know a real headache. We were creating two separate source code pieces, and I'm able to now do all this within one piece, so it's all identical. Um, and uh, also the ability to uh, you know turn it sideways and and do do everything sideways. I know that was a, a request for the other one uh, that we just didn't do. So a lot of cool things. Uh, right now we're still in, in alpha testing. We're getting ready to put it into beta testing within the next week or so, two weeks. Depends on um, how uh, the holidays fall and what uh, what we need to do there. But once that's available, pretty much anybody can have access to it once uh, that process is complete. So we're getting there. Awesome. Answer. I love uh, you mentioned this, but I just uh, an emphasis for everybody to understand this. So previously we had two different apps. We had an, an iPhone and an Android app, which required two sets of languages, two sets of, uh, of coders or developers, uh, two totally different apps. And now you've, you've been able to do this from one coding language, which means that we can create one app and everybody on iPhone and everyone on Android will have the same experience. So that's just huge. Yeah, exact same experience. And it's huge for us because we don't have to maintain two sets. We don't have to debug two sets of code. We don't have to learn two sets of languages. It's all one language. And I know that's way probably too technical for, for people that's that wants to just, you know, I want to be able to add my contacts to my database. But you can certainly do that and and make it you know, make it very uh, uh, easy to to do. And, and in fact, um, just coming in here, clicking on the little plus, I want to add a new contact. Uh, it's an A, you know, uh, Jimmy Johnson, click on save. And, and now he's going to be in my main database. He's also going to be in the RealVolv database uh, that um, that's in there. So, you know, a lot of, if, if I want to start a workflow, I can start a workflow. If I want to uh, see, oh, actually, let me do this. Let me go back to Smith just, just so you can see this. Uh, one of the, the things that uh, people were asking us, like, well, I've got a husband and wife. I want to see the notes. Um, before we would have a notes for the husband, a, a, a 
a note section for the wife. Now you'll see that it does say on John Smith, on John Smith, um, on Mary Smith. So the the notes are in uh, date order by date, but also include you know the spouse's notes as well. So you can see all the different things that that go along with you know each of the the contacts, uh, all the properties that they have, all the transactions they have. Um, so it's just a lot of, you know, all the pretty much good information that you want to have known whenever you're out in the field, it's there and be able to create notes and and start workflows and that type of stuff. So Cool. There's a question here about syncing with iCal. Okay, so iCal itself, um, you can set up Google to sync to iCal. Um, once it's in Google, then it syncs to us. We do not sync to right now to iCal, nor do we sync to Outlook uh, inherently. But there are tools that you can get that synchronize those items to Google, and then Google to Railvolve is is done automatically. So we are working on a uh, uh, an Exchange or Outlook sync uh, fairly soon. So that's um, that'll be coming down the pipe but right now we only synchronize to Google but lots of things sync to Google so if you can get to sync to Google you can get it to us perfect so part of the answer to that is probably where are you hosting that are you using iCal as just the the portal to then host it on iCloud or um, or on Google and so if it's Google then you're already taken care of right um, okay, so a question here, what is the Google Drive integration for? I've enabled it, it creates three folders on my Google Drive, uh, contact property and transaction, but what does it do? Ah, okay, so um, anytime that you have contacts, properties, or transactions, and particularly uh, properties, I mean, you've got your listing contracts, your disclosures, your disclaimers, your all your different documents and stuff, we have a section here called files and in the files uh, you've you've got a, a given address of a property whatever what you can do is say I want to create a new folder and um, within that new folder uh, I may need to redo this um, I because uh, it's not letting me hang for one second let me just double check it make sure yeah, it's or I don't have the rights. Um, the um, what it does is it allows you to select a given folder within the system to synchronize to. And I've already got this one synchronized. But any documents that get added to this folder will then automatically be synced to your Google Drive. Um, one cool thing that you can do is every record within the database has this little if you put your mouse over this little eye you'll see this blue pop up and it's a, a special email address we, we call it a dropbox email address it's not dropbox.com but it's it's a an email where information can be automatically emailed to this record well if any of those documents get emailed to this record if they have attachments they get automatically uh extracted from that email and put into the files tab. So maybe your appraiser sends you an appraisal to the address that you've got. You've told them, hey, here's a, an email address that I want you to also include. Um, you can have it sent to there. It'll automatically go here, It'll automatically go to the Google Drive at that point. And you may have uh, sent information to the seller saying, hey, Anytime I've got any documents, I'm going to share them with you on this particular drive link. Go to this drive and you can see all the different documents. Well, as soon as the appraiser sends it to you, you may not even be at work yet. It gets put into uh, the Google, the RealVolve files. It then sends the files to Google Drive. And now your um, seller could have those same documents. Um, and you've not even seen them yet. Not that you want to do that necessarily, but um, you know, it, it, it's just a way of setting up that sharing of files easily between records in Realvolve with Google. You can do it for contacts, properties, or transactions. 
And then a uh, question here in that little group of shortcuts in the upper right. So your little icons there on a contact record. Can there be a, a link to a specific Dropbox folder? Dropbox itself is not one that Dropbox.com is not one that we integrate with. We only do the Google Drive right now. So if that's what you're asking. Yeah. I think that was the question. Yeah, Dropbox.com is a separate service. It's very similar but different uh, to Google Drive. We are integrating with Google on, on a lot of different things because their integration is extremely easy um, to, to integrate with things. But um, the, the plan is to add uh, Dropbox and also uh, Microsoft's uh, One, OneDrive. Um, but that's that's not been added yet. So recently, um, I introduced a, a new little feature, our Realvolve newsletter. And so, um, Mark, maybe you could show us real quick how you would install the newsletter into your account. I'm going to drop that code into Slack for you. Um, and then what you might do if you wanted to send that out to a list of people and you kind of touched on it earlier but what i'm going to do real quick just as a bonus for everybody is if you'll check the chat there in go to webinar i'm going to put that code in there for you guys as well so if you would like to check it out there's still some time to send out a november newsletter to your clients or to your sphere of influence and um, you'll find that code right there so okay welcome. so under un, and i'm not sure that i i don't think i've in, in, installed these yet what's the name of these uh is in the library you're going to find it in our, a real of newsletter subscription um i was just checking to see if i'd already installed it though i'm not sure that i have well i what i can do is i can click on this new template i'm in, under the template section um click on new template i want to add templates from the library so these are the same workflows and templates that are available and which one is it the title of it uh, the one right above that, November 9, 2019. Right here. Okay. Yep. So here we have the November 2019. I can come under here under the install package and put in the code that he just texted over. Thank you very much. And we'll click on install. So what it does then is it says, hey, I'm installing the package. And then it just said, hey, it was successful. So now I can come in under my templates again, go back to the templates list. What's the title of that template? Oh, November something. Search for November. There we go. So here is the template. If you want to go in here and, and customize it, you can come in here and make whatever editorial changes and stuff that you want to, you know, to personalize it to your own need. Um, probably like any of these, uh, Facebook, all, all of these items, um, you're probably going to want to click on those and make sure that you click on the link and put in your appropriate Facebook links and stuff that you want so that those are are in there. Um, all the rest of these are just merge fields, so they'll get filled in automatically for you. Um, but um, we're all good there. So uh, RV newsletter. So if I wanted to send this to a group of people, maybe I want to send this to everybody that's on my newsletter list. Uh, I'm going to create a new filter. And in this filter, I'm going to say uh, newsletter. Oh, until I've done several different things here. So 375, um, uh, there we go. So 375, and from here, I can just say select all the records. Now it's only gonna go to the ones that do have email addresses, but uh, select that, uh, click on the little email, because I've got more than 250 on here, it's gonna say, hey, hold it, make sure that you're not spamming people. We don't want that. And then if you know, yeah, I'm not spamming people, you can check this and just confirm. Um, that's really just an indication that, that you know, making sure that you are being valid there. So um, RV newsletter, I'm just typing in the template area, you can select which template that you want. Um, I can show a preview of this so that it would, you know, come in there. Uh, 
the the first person in my list his their name is hp office jets a special one that i've got in there so it's kind of uh uh silly but it's there uh joe which is i'm joe agent in this particular uh account so it's it's in there so it does the the merge fields and stuff so a lot of this stuff's in there joe agent and i've just got some generic information in there for name and information so all of this can be done once i get this set up the way i want um i can click on send and it will blast it out to all 375 people um, as long as they have addresses email valid email addresses uh, just a caution again it don't spam people if if they're not expecting this um you just want to be cautious there because if you if they if you get a bunch of people saying spam 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 uh you can get blacklisted by your providers and it can really cause you some challenges and um, getting off those blacklists can be time consuming so that's that's pretty much it select the template and send it and I'm going to do not send because I don't want that to go out. <laughs> um, One side note on that. Um, so that will be a, a subscription starting in January. But if you're interested in receiving both the November and the December, uh, in the chat, I just included a form there you can fill out. And so you'd receive November and December for free. And then you will not automatically be enrolled to continue into January. You'll receive information if you would like to do that. And so, um, a good nurturing tool for you to use for the rest of the year. And just a, like I say, kind of a bonus to, to you guys. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we are pretty much out of time. Any, any last few things? Let's see. Stephanie was still having trouble finding the template. So just make sure that you're looking for a real Evolve newsletter subscription. November 2019 in the library. If you go into a template or workflow, either one, and choose the new option, we're going to add templates from the library and hit continue. That's where it brings up the library of all the different stuff. Um, in here, you can probably just do a uh, November, um, do a search for November, and there's the A Realvolve newsletter subscription, November 2019. Click on that and then click on install package you'll be required to put in that code and then from there um, it'll install perfect all right they found it um, oh uh, this would be a, a quick good one to answer so asking about doing open houses and trying to collect information from people coming in the door so um, yeah, you, you've got it, Vincent. So use a Google form on an iPad, zap the data into RealVolve. That's a great way to do it. There's also some uh, other resources out there that you could utilize as well that you could accomplish the same type of thing. Yeah, the 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 cool thing about Zapier is that it does integrate with Google Sheets. So you create a form within Google Forms. It saves that information to Google Sheets, first name, last name, email, phone number, whatever. Then you can create a zap that takes any new records, any new rows off of that group, that Google Sheet that then automatically imports it into Realvolve. Uh, it can automatically start a workflow. And so by the time they fill out the form, hit submit, you it'll send them to Realvolve, start that workflow. By the time they walk out of the open house, they've already got an email saying, hey, thanks for visiting our open house we've got other properties in this area and in this price range if you're interested please let us know you know what what better way of of getting leads than than doing that i mean they're gonna say yeah i, I am interested let me know more and being able to send them more information or uh, or whatever so a lot of really good resources there for you to to automate and that's really what realvolve and workflows are all about because we integrate with Zapier, um, lots of different places can integrate with us. Because we have workflows, you can automate everything that you do with those people. So some awesome tools there. All right, well, guys, it's uh, two o'clock Central Time, and uh, we used up right at that one hour. 
Uh, we'll uh, let you know about other uh, fireside chats that'll be coming up soon. And um, if uh, you go out to our YouTube channel, just go out to youtube.com and do a search for RealVolve, you'll come to our, our RealVolve channel. We've got other fireside chats, other, um, other videos that are available that you can pick and choose from. A lot of really good, valuable information and don't overlook that resource because it's powerful, very powerful. So you guys have an awesome Thanksgiving and coming up. And if uh, if you need us, let us know. Have a great day.